what's up everyone oh man as the weeks go on and this dumpster fire continues to rage on uh, these videos are a lot harder to uh, a lot harder to do <laughs> to do um, tough one Bengals fall 24 20 at the hands of Tennessee uh, man I mean just just when you thought you know they had something going. The you know defense I thought played pretty well overall. Um, I, I, these are these are it's becoming ridiculous. Um, you know doing these uh, doing these videos, man, it's tough. Uh, yeah. Bengals give up twenty seven first downs, um, total eleven rushing, um, ten passing. Uh, six via penalty. I mean, seven for 15. This has been the continuous problem for the Cincinnati Bengals so far defensively. And again, I'm not going to crack down on them you know, too much defensively. Um, but you give up 416 net yards, um, seven for 15, 47% on, uh, on third downs. That, it just, that cannot happen. I mean, it just cannot happen. And, um, you know, Bengals were they were torched, you know, pretty good. Um with a couple play you know, a couple plays, Marcus Mariota, twenty five of forty four, two hundred and sixty four yards. Um he did have a touchdown and a pick on uh, the touchdown to uh DeMarco Murray, who DeMarco Murray was uh fantastic uh this entire game. Uh DeMarco Murray uh, fourteen rushes for forty two yards. Uh he had two touchdowns, his longest touchdown was uh, nine yards. Man, I mean, all you can do is shake your head, man. It's it's so tough. Um, started off, the the Titans took the took the lead seven nothing after the Bengals go three and out. It just kind of went. It seemed like it went kind of downhill from there. Um, the the Titans went on a ten play eighty four yard drive that took up five minutes and twenty five seconds. Uh, was capped off by that Demarco Murray two yard touchdown run to go. Then the Bengals get it right back, and they go down the field. Um, eight plays, 75 yards. It took, uh, looks like, three minutes and 12 seconds off the clock. Capped off by Brandon LaFell, a uh, 37-yard pass from Andy Dalton on a blown coverage by uh, Tennessee. And Andy Dalton, you know, he did a great job finding uh, Brandon LaFell, and boom, got it done. Of course, Randy Bullock misses the extra point. <clears throat> it's par for the course, it seems like. So... You know, just when you think you get it there, you get it going, things happen again. Uh, you know, and then DeMarco Murray gets a second uh, rushing touchdown of the game after a five-play 27-yard drive that took just over a minute and a half. Um, and Ryan Suckup, he was able to uh, to capitalize on the, on the on the extra point there to give uh, Tennessee a 14-6 lead. Joe Mixon gives right back on the – there was the interception. There was the – it's kind of a crazy sequence of plays, and you know, Bengals turn it over. You know, next play, uh, Dark West Denard picks it off, and Bengals are right in business. One play, three yard run by Joe Mixon. You know, Bengals get right back in it. Randy Bullock clanks it off the <laughs> the upright, but it somehow sneaks in, fourteen thirteen, and then right towards the you know right towards the end. Ryan suck up a 44-yard field goal after a 10-play, 53-yard drive for um, uh, for Tennessee. That gave them the uh, the 17-13 lead going into the half. Both, you know, coming in the second, you know, the the second half, both teams really couldn't get much going on. Uh, third quarter was scoreless, and then the Bengals take the lead. 70-yard touchdown pass, great play. Um, A.J. Green, um, you know, beautiful pass. Andy Dalton, A.J. Green. A.J. fights it off. Two-play the yard, two play, 82-yard drive. Like I said, capped off 74-yard or 70-yard pass uh, by A.J. Green. Just when you think Bengals can get it really going again, they they continue to uh, to go backwards. And they can't get much going on. And then right after that, it just it tends to go south. So... Uh, you know, in the second quarter, you had you forced you forced uh, Tennessee to to three or to five straight punts. I mean, they couldn't get you know they couldn't get anything going on. So defensively, the Bengals looked you know 
Bengals kept the ball for uh, just 19 minutes and 51 seconds compared to 40 minutes and 9 seconds for Tennessee. That's a trend we've been seeing a lot so far this season with the Cincinnati Bengals. Defense is on the field a lot. Grand, the defense has done a really good job of the bending, not breaking aspect of it. They just can't get it done. Um, same situation here. Um, and it, Bengals, like I said, defensively just cannot, just couldn't get it going. And, um, you know, offensively, and they kept the defense on the field a lot because they, they weren't able to get Tennessee off the field either. Um, even when you, you know, even when you do, uh, you know, you force a force a punt, you know, the Bengals offense couldn't really get anything going. I mean, you get, you just get things going. It just, it continues to go back. I mean, you get, you know, the, the opening drive is a 10 play, basically a 99 yard drive, you know, including the penalty, the 15 yard penalty. And then right after that, you know, I was like I said, you get the touchdown and then a six play drive for 18 yards. They can't get anything going. Bengals force another punt. And then Randy Bullock misses a field goal. Uh, or not Randy Bullock, uh, Brian Suckup misses a field goal. That was on their third drive. And then, you know, after the fumble, you know, get a touchdown. Uh, that was a five-play, 18-yard drive. And then intercepted immediately right after that. And then the field goal, you know. So that was so that's how it was going here in the second quarter, or the first two quarters of this game. And then you force three straight punts, and then a fumble, and then two more punts. And then, you know, just when the Bengals take the lead, you know, you get – you get it going and you're in a right, you know, a really good spot. And unfortunately, Bengals defense just cannot get it. Um, Josh Shaw takes a couple huge penalties that, that, that I think personally, I think we're going to, going to cost, you know, cost the, it cost the Bengals. It, it, it really did. Um, that's, you know, plain and simple, you know, going through the, the, the log here of, you know, of this game. I mean, you see, you see the plays that occur, and it's it's mighty frustrating here in the fourth quarter. Here, let's see, you had let's go to that final drive. Let's see. So yeah, Bengals get or Tennessee gets the ball back. You know, they get you know two minute warning. Uh, you know, really nothing, really much was going on. Two minute warning. Um, then you get the penalty on Josh Shaw with uh, a minute fifty five left. On a deep pass to Eric Decker, and it's the defensive holding penalty. So it enforces, you know, enforced at the Cincinnati 25. Now right there, an automatic first down when that could have, you know, I believe that was a third down play. It was third and five, actually. Yeah, third and five. So you get a, a, a crucial penalty on third and five, giving Tennessee the ball back again. That is the kind of stuff that this Cincinnati Bengals team continues to do, and it's been the mantra of this organization under Marvin Lewis. Lack of discipline is is truly unbelievable. And I, I, it seems like a broken record every time. Uh, I know every one of these videos this year, I, Marvin and it's time for it's time for the change to be made. Uh, this season right now we're three and six. You know this team's not going anywhere. You're not. This team is not going to go ten and six and make the playoffs. I'm sorry, it's not happening. We've seen what this team has done. We've seen what they are. It's not. It's. It. There's no other way to go but down. Continue to to go down. It's not going to go up. I'm sorry, folks. Even though we've go to Denver next week in a game that, you know, it's going to be tough. Bengals do not play well in Denver. They just don't. Uh, Denver's a team that you know we're going to see what they're what they are tonight when they take on Tom Brady and, and the New England Patriots. And unfortunately for them, you know Tom Brady's Tom Brady. He, like a lot of people say, he's the greatest of all time. So there's a good chance that Denver's going to you know take it you know take a beating in that game, you know simply because of of, of what it is. So with that being the case, you know you're going to have a Denver team that is coming off. You know, they're licking their wounds as well. And, you know, it's going to be a battle of the inept here coming up next week. But fortunately, I got to give I got to give the edge to um, to Denver. I mean, it based off of what we've seen, just when you think, like I said, just when you think the Bengals have it going and they they look like they've got it rolling, something happens, lack of discipline, whether it's, like I said, a Josh Shaw penalty or 
No, I'm even Vontaze perfect. I mean, Grandin, uh, let's go go back here to, to, to Tez. Vontaze perfect, and I've seen on Twitter, and I, I retweeted a couple times, is it's very hard to defend him right now at this point in time. It just is. Vontaze perfect. I've always been a big sticker for him. I've always defended him. It's hard. You know, is the is the NFL, I think, per, like purposely targeting him? Yes, I truly believe that. I think they are targeting Vontez Perfect and will call him for the 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 s- smallest of penalties. I truly believe that. However, he's not making himself, he's not doing himself any favors, and he's putting a lot of that on himself, and it is what it is. So with that being the case, you know, Tez, you got to realize that, man, and you cannot be bumping into officials. Granted, you know, I, I think personally, I thought the the penalty call, the the unsportsmanlike conduct, like the late hit out of bounds, I I thought that was ridiculous. But again, your Vontez perfect. You are a multiple time offender in the NFL. A lot of people are targeting you and want you out of the league. It's plain and simple. So you have to know that, and therefore, you know, you can't be putting yourself in that position. That's what he's doing, and therefore, he's getting tagged with those penalties. So. It is what it is, man. You cannot be doing that. So, you know, again, it's hard to defend a guy like that. But when he's on the field, this defense is, I mean, they're ferocious. They really are. They play hard. And I've heard a lot from, I believe it might have been Carlos Dunlap on Bengals line a couple weeks ago talking about Vontez Perfect, how he said that Tez, he knows exactly what play is coming. And, like, I mean, he can read it and he tells guys exactly where to go. Uh, you know, on on the field in the, in the formation. So having a guy like that at, you know, as the quarterback of your defense is crucial. And unfortunately, when you're ejected from a game for bumping into an official, which there's a good chance you're – obviously he's going to be fine. So there's a good chance you, he may get suspended. It's – it is – it's Vontaze perfect in the NFL. We know, we know what to expect. So – you know, again, it, it seems like a broken record each and every time I, I do these videos, you know, post game. It is, it's, it's rapidly becoming, it's getting old. It's rapidly becoming obnoxious doing these. It's, you know, I hate doing it. It's especially after a loss. Uh, but, you know, right now, three and six, you know, this team, there's no fight in this team. Uh, just when you think, like I said, just when you think they have it, they do something. You know, lack of discipline in the penalty area and the secondary, whether it's a holding, illegal contact, crap like that, that's what continues to go on. And that is, like I said, that is the mantra of Marvin Lewis, of a Marvin Lewis coach team right now in Cincinnati. Like I said, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Was Marvin a great hire? Yes, he was. However, all good things must come to an end and all voices, you know, they, they tend to run. You know they they run they run their course and that's what's happened here in Cincinnati. It is time to make that move and bring somebody else in here that's going to have a little fire and go after these guys a little bit more and and show them what's up. That's what has to happen here in Cincinnati. So you know another week. Unfortunately, it's another loss for the Cincinnati Bengals team. Like I said, it's rapidly getting old doing this, but I mean, it is what it is. It's life of uh, life of a Bengals fan, and you know, hey. So, again, as always, thank you guys so much for your support. As always, check out FieldTheImpactSports.com and follow me on Twitter at I am Chris Asbrock. Also, check out uh, a YouTube page where you know a lot of these videos do go. And um, as always, thank you guys so much for your support, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a good one.